Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will review the game from the tie breaks of the FIDE World Cup 2021. And this is the game between a 2600 rated Egyptian player called Ahmed Ali and Abdelrahman Hesham, who is only 2400 rated, but he's also a GM. So it's two Egyptian GMs battling it out in the tie breaks, which is very exciting. And just to give you some background information, which I think it's pretty important, Abdel Rahman, he lost a game due to a blunder and Abdel Rahman really showed that he wanted to make a comeback uh, against the higher rated player in this game. And he kicked his countryman Ahmed out of this tournament. Let's get into it. So we start off with a pseudo Banco. What does that look like? It's d4, knight f6, knight f3, c5, d5, and now b5. Usually a normal Banco is with something like c4 on move 2, and then after c5, d5, now b5. And this is more logical because now black has a clear target, which is this pawn on c4. As you can see, this is the position in the game. Black doesn't really have a target, and he's simply taking a lot of space on the queen side. But definitely, just by playing this opening, Abdel Rahman, he really showed that he wanted to crush him and win this opening with very sharp play. Already after these three moves, I'm very excited to show you this one. So let's have a look. We have bishop g5 and g6. A very interesting decision by Ahmed, which is to take the knight with the bishop. And the pawn takes back. So the first thing I will say about this position is that positionally, this is way way better for white. Why? Because this pawn structure is not really what you want. Problem though is that black has compensation in the form of dark square control with this bishop. This bishop will go ahead and just go on this long diagonal and he will be able to control all of these dark squares in the position which will turn out to be very important. Very logical move e4 white takes some space as well as attacking this pawn on b5 and since this pawn is now attacked black decided to play b4 but as you guys know with every pawn move you make you make also weaknesses in your position which squares are weak well i'm talking about a4 and c4 most importantly c4 because the knight has potential to reach a square a3 trying to undermine the pawn, bishop g7 and bishop d3 castles castles d6 solidifying the pawn structure and now white goes for this plan of rerouting the knight to c4 so we have knight to d2 queen c7 and now knight to c4 a5 solidifying the pawn structure and queen to d2 knight to d7 a takes c takes and now knight to d4 and white has this idea of trying to reach the c6 square which is a little bit annoying for black bishop a6 activating his pieces and knight to c6 and at first sight this knight looks really annoying controlling all of these squares but it's not clear what it's doing apart from being annoying and now black decided to give up this bishop for this knight and activate this knight afterwards. So we have bishop takes, bishop takes and knight to c5. Activating the knight and putting it on the very nice square on c5. If we have a look at this position, I think that it's clear that black has two pretty much optimized pieces. This knight on c5 is nice. This bishop on g7 is amazing when this move gets played and this move will get played very, very soon. And then this bishop will turn out to be a complete beast on this diagonal. Also, what we see is that this knight is annoying, as I said. I think the only problem piece in the position is probably this white bishop, which is simply looking at its own pawns. Queen f4, rook fv8, putting pressure along this file, rook fe1, and now a4. I really, really like this move a4. So black tries and just get all of his pieces active. And in the process, he doesn't really mind losing pawns. And he isn't even losing them because it looks like this pawn on b4 can be taken. But actually, there is uh, a lot of compensation in the form of this guy, this bishop. And now it's the right time to play this move f5 because now, as you can see, there are clear targets on this diagonal and on this one as well. So as soon as this pawn is out of the way, the bishop can come to c3 and pick up pieces and all of these dark squares are so terribly weak. So we have e takes on f5 and now bishop takes on b2. And white also realizes that, well, this bishop, you know, with all its dark square control is probably worth like a rook. White says, well, I'll just activate my knight. You can take my rook. I'm fine with that. And black says, well, hmm, okay, I think a rook is worth much more than my bishop. So I'll gladly take that one, especially when pieces get traded off this exchange will be worth probably much more because a rook versus a piece 
is two points up, rook to e4, and now queen h6, and black needs to be careful because white might threaten something like f6 followed by queen to g7. So what black does is playing f6 himself, and now bishop to d3 attacking the rook, rook back, and now bishop to b5 pressurizing the pawn on a4. And now this position looks a little bit awkward for black with this queen on h6, and what black decides to do in this position is just genius. What he does is g5. And while it looks like though white can simply grab a pawn on f6, well actually he can't because now queen to g7. And what did I tell you about trading queens? After the queens get traded off, the value of the exchange, right, a rook for a piece, will be much more valuable for black. And so if the queens get traded off, that's a really good deal for black and he doesn't mind giving up a pawn for this. And there is no way to decline the queen trade because this rook on a1 is hanging. And white realizes this and so he doesn't even take on f6. Instead what he does is he plays h4, trying to put more pressure on these pawns. But queen to g7 anyway, black really wants to trade those queens and it's a little bit awkward for white because white has to decline. Rook to e4, pawn takes, pawn takes and rook to a3, trying to activate this rook with a rook lift. And black does exactly the same thing. Rook f8, g4, rook f6. Look at this very nice rook lifting ID, just like that. Queen h3 and rook h6. Queen g3, rook e1, activating all of his pieces. King g2, knight e4. Look at black just bringing all of the pieces into the attack. If we go back just like 5 to 10 moves or so, let's go back. Look at this. In simply like 10 moves or so, what happened is this. All of a sudden, all of black's pieces get extremely active. Queen to d3, rook h4, putting pressure on this pawn. Queen c4, and now black played an amazing move. And I want you to pause the video and try to figure out an amazing combination that was played by black, after which white had to resign the game. So the move that was not played in the game, which is objectively maybe a little bit more correct, but is way less beautiful is this move rook takes on g4 and in this position white really needs to play this move because after something like king to f3 we get something like rook f4 and king to g2 well this is actually a forced mate just like this so after this move rook takes already rook to g3 needs to be played and then something like queen h6 could be played also trying to mate the king just like that this was all not played in the game what was played in the game is this beautiful move rook to h2 sacking the full rook ahmed thinks well okay i have to accept this there is no way i can't accept it because after king to f3 there is simply rook takes on f2 which is mate so you can't do that instead what you have to do is you have to take the rook so this is all forced queen to h6 and again the reply is forced. You have to play rook to h3. There is no time to play king g2 because again, this is mate, so you can't do that. So what you have to do is rook h3. After this move, it looks like black doesn't have anything, but Abdel Rahman, he calculated everything. And so what he played in this position is crazy. Rook h1, giving up yet another rook, wow. And so again, there is no way to decline this sacrifice. After king g2, again, this is simply mate. Instead, what you have to do is you have to accept this rook. There is no other way. And now queen takes on h3. And this is completely crushing. King to g1, queen to g4, this is all forced. In this position, there are basically three moves um, to be played. King h2, h1, and king to f1. In the game, what was played was uh, king to f1. Because after both of these moves, it's gonna be a very nice mate in three. After king h1, for example, black is is gonna go for queen h4 and takes on f2. So we have queen h4, king g1, queen takes on f2, king h1, and now knight to g3 mate. And also it's completely the same with king h2. It's simply gonna be exactly the same mate, just like that. What white decided to do in this position is to go to f1. Now there's a very nice knight fork, and this is all forced, and that's just the beauty of this game. Knight to d2, forking the king and the queen. And after king e1 and knight takes queen on c4, Ahmed Adli resigned the game because there is nothing to be done here. Black is simply up uh, a queen for a piece. So today, Abdel Rahman, he simply showed that he can come back like this. And you know, that's something that you wouldn't expect from a GM player who lost uh, a lot of rating in the last couple of years to win in this amazing style against a very high rated player. And that's also why I like this 
this game. It was a very sharp, aggressive game with lots of tactics and a lot of beautiful patterns. So I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. That would really mean a lot to me. And comment down below what games you want me to analyze. And with that said, as always, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.